Hello again, Internet, and welcome back to Instant Screaming, featuring two movies that you can sit down and watch in the comfort of your own home tonight. And let's get the bad news out of the way first to take a quick look at Anguish. Anguish is one of these movies that has no outstanding failures, but just refuses to commit to doing anything interesting and spends an hour and a half meandering. The first moment that I knew I was really going to have problems with Anguish was when they started throwing up these title cards right at the beginning of the movie, talking about serious you know, mental disorders and, and children and teenagers and debilitating dysfunctional problems. And then when I actually got into the movie, instead of actually addressing anything like that and having to do something that might be ugly, they wound up giving their um, autistic protagonist movie autism, which basically translated to, for the majority of the movie, to being shy. It sucked all possible drama out of the situation and just made it kind of a generic protagonist that didn't say much having hauntings happen to her. When she actually does start being haunted and possessed, some problems do crop up and there's a few legitimately disturbing moments in there, but for the most part the movie just really wanted to avoid having any of that. Uh, I, I'm reminded in a lot of ways uh, with The House at the End of the Street starring Jennifer Lawrence, but that movie had a protagonist who we saw have no problems in her life whatsoever except that people constantly talked about all the problems that she had in her life. Yeah, you can say that, but if it's not apparent in the actions of your movie, I don't believe you. And that's kind of the problem that Anguish has, uh, where it's too committed to being safe and nice and pretty to tackle the disturbing stuff that it wanted to put in its subject matter. So the whole thing's just kind of a bit of a dud. It's got a couple of cool visuals, but there's no substance to it. Although, one thing I really do want an explanation for is there's a random scene in town where there's a character in the background who looks and stares at our protagonist for a little while and then puts on an animal face mask and wanders off. And it's never heard of or spoken about again. It just sort of happens, and I would love to know what the hell the story was behind that. But as unfortunately disappointing as that was, I do want to give you all a good movie just to keep everybody in good spirits. So here is He Never Died, and uh, this one should be available on Netflix. And here's the pitch, okay? Henry Rollins, right? Henry Rollins? Is Cain. Yeah, Cain, you know, from the Bible. Cain killed Abel. And he is now an immortal cannibal still living in metropolitan USA and gives absolutely zero fucks. He has been alive for far too long to care about anything and wants no trouble and no footprint. He just spends pretty much every day in his apartment watching TV and buying blood from medical interns. And he has no social skills and just does not give two craps about anything. Until he gets a surprise daughter and then she's kidnapped. So he has to try to get her back and that puts him in kind of unfortunate situations where he uh, his bloodlust is raised. The movie itself is kind of marketed as a bit of a, a horror comedy or a dark comedy, but I don't think it's like a horror comedy in the... Not in terms of like Shaun of the Dead or um, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. It's not horror sit comedy. There's really no jokes. It's just kind of amusing watching Henry Rollins kind of deadpan his way around, delivering these emotionless and perfunctory ass whoopings on on these mobsters who've kidnapped his daughter. And kind of keeps you interested and in going along until you get to the end of the movie and, and it gives a, a really interesting emotional turn where you realize that all the wooden deadpan, just this apathy has completely broken his own spirit because he's just tired and bored of killing everyone constantly all the time to sate his never-ending bloodlust. It's one of the more interesting versions of the apathetic ageless immortal without devolving into melodrama. It's almost like instead of, you know, vampires going artistic and whoa, he's just depressed. And I couldn't imagine that I was ever going to end up in a situation where wooden and deadpan were words that I could use to praise a performance, but there you go. Henry Rollins is great to watch and he never died. But alas, our time is up for today. Hopefully this helps you out. And if you've seen either of these two movies and want to weigh in, do please leave a comment below. Uh, otherwise, uh, leave any suggestions for movies that you'd like to see on this show or on Modern Horror. Like and subscribe for more videos. 
And uh, if you are feeling particularly awesome, you can support this show on Modern Horror by checking out our Patreon campaign here. Anyway, cheers.